Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hey, lady. Hey, lady. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you, you can already. <laughs> I don't know if you can already tell, but I am here with one of my close friends today, <laughs> Michelle McGlade. And Michelle, um, I you just made me remember something when you just made me laugh. Uh, is that you were at the very first time. I ever had a professional photographer work with me and I was so scared. I was so scared. And in fact, I had professional makeup done also. And I went and looked in the mirror and screamed because I thought I looked like a clown <laughs> and came back out. And Michelle goes, no, no, this is what you're supposed to look like when you're going to get a professional um, photograph done. And I said, oh, I'm so nervous. And Michelle goes, I'll go with you and I'll make you laugh. And you guys, it, I will actually include a, one of the pictures that came out of this photo shoot because it was awesome. She had me laughing. It was the most fun photo shoot I have ever done. So, Michelle, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I remember that. And those, those photos are fabulous. They look like you. Yeah, they, uh, that's because you really made me laugh. Yeah. You know, and just smiling. Yeah, that's nice. But when I really belly laugh, oh, that's my favorite. And you always make me do that. You know, I don't want to hijack your show here, but I'll tell you <laughs> that I really do understand that fear. If you, if I were to dig out and show you all of my um, photographs, you know how they take one every year, kindergarten, first, second, third grade. Mm -hmm. I'm literally, I'm going like this. I'm going... <laughs> and I know you're, you're listening and you can't see what I just did, but just picture the worst face ever on a chubby girl. <laughs> it was so awkward. And I would dread, I would dread photo day at school. And then you'd have to wait to get the pictures back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Uh, so this is going to be on YouTube and audios. So if you're listening to audio, you might want to go look at it on YouTube. But if you can't, I just want you to picture, you know, that game where they put that really diff odd contraption in your mouth so that you cannot actually form words correctly. That's what she looked like. She looked like she had one of those things in her mouth. <laughs> but you didn't. It was just your face. That was hilarious. And um, today, Michelle looks particularly um, hippie-like, which is awesome because she normally looks like the most incredibly professionally polished businesswoman. And basically, I always look like I look today, um, no makeup with a tiara. <laughs> and um, no matter what, Michelle is always gorgeous, both inside and out. So one more anecdote about... Um, <laughs> I. I I won't, I won't promise one more. There may be more. But just to prove how gorgeous Michelle is, the first time um, I met her, we got to know each other. I literally thought she was a model. I looked at her website, and I asked her, are those really pictures of you, or is that a model? And she's like, oh, no, it's really me. And then when I met her, I was like, oh, my God, she is that gorgeous. So I asked her, I said, are your toes really ugly or something? Are they deformed? Because you can't be this perfect. What did you do, Michelle? I showed you my toes. <laughs> and you And you could uh, you be a so toe model. Disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I was so upset. <laughs> uh, and I'm nice too. <laughs> right? That's I what know. You said. You're like, and you're it, nice. That's, I, she is beautiful on the inside and out. Oh, so I, I'll tell you who's lucky is everyone who gets to know you. What? And yeah, yeah. So if you're listening right now, which I know you are, you wouldn't even know I'm saying this. Um, you're going to love getting to know Michelle. Thank so you. Michelle, um, I want to do the formal introduction so people can get to know you not only through my eyes, 
but also your business side. So if you don't mind, I'm going to take just a minute to share your bio. Here we go. Award-winning woman. Award-winning woman in business and best-selling author. That's who Michelle McGlade is. She began pocket, podcasting, podcasting in 2015 for the love of uncovering the story behind the story. I absolutely love that. Thank you. This modern leader's maven believes success is an inside-out game and leadership of self is the key to building teams and unlocking the next level growth in business and life. And Michelle, I know you really, you really walk your talk because that is Thank exactly you. how you live your life. Michelle is also the CEO of Evolutionize Media, a podcast network and consultancy bringing life voices of modern leaders and innovative organizations by aligning strategy, development, launch planning, and production for new and rebranded podcasts. And to be totally transparent, she is the person, <laughs> Evolutionized Media and Michelle McLeod. Uh, she is my producer. I'm on her podcast network. She has consulted with me. Um, and I am uh, succeeding as a podcaster, all thanks to Michelle McGlade. In fact, I wouldn't even be podcasting if not for you, Michelle. Thank you. She's also the host of her own show, and it's the best name ever. She's Talking Back. Actually, it's what? She's Talking Back. <laughs> <laughs> even better. She's Talking Back. <laughs> and she features women in the C-suite and topics on leadership. I highly, highly, highly recommend her podcast. Michelle's work has been featured by Microsoft, Thrive Global, Minneapolis St. Paul Magazine, and many more places. And she slayed the stage at organizations such as Autodesk, eWomen Network, and Deluxe Financial Services. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for being on here. Not only being my producer, my consultant, my everything when it comes to podcasts, but also my guest. Yeah, I'm thrilled. Thrilled to be here. I'm already having fun, which I knew this was going to be boatloads of fun. <laughs> There's no way not to have fun when the two of us are together. Right. <laughs> we have room together. We have Ubered together. We have... Um, I. We I can't, can't tell you together. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. secret. Shh. secret. Hmm. So, Michelle, I'm going to get you talking a little bit more here. I know that you have had so many experiences from corporate to running your own businesses, and I don't even know everything else in between. I would love for you to tell us a little bit about your journey. Oh, that's interesting. And how long do you have? But when, when I think about even the, um, some of the essence behind Dare to Leap, I think that describes actually perfectly my career journey. I really, really do because I've taken some really big leaps uh, and I'm going to be the first person to tell you that uh, it's not always easy and it's rough and it's bumpy, but it's very, very, very rewarding. I, I started my career in finance actually at a college. And I spent, you know, a handful of years uh, working in finance only to be courted by the sales leadership that I was working with to go into a business development role. So dare to leap, number one, right? A finance geek, someone who's pulling all-nighters to close the books for companies, <laughs> moving across the country and figuring out how to sell stuff. Yeah, I would say that was kind of daring. <laughs> Kathy's trying to not laugh her way through the whole thing. So it, that was quite an adventure. And I spent then, I think the next 10-ish years or so building a corporate career. I took some leaps in there as well, um, taking opportunities that maybe seemed a little bit scary. One big example was I was out in Colorado at the time working for another organization and ended up moving all the way over to the East Coast 
and working in a business development role out there. And if you can all, you can see me, I'm definitely a fair skinned Midwest girl at heart. <laughs> Uh, did did okay on the west side, but those those gents over on the east coast they ate me alive for a while until I toughened up a bit. It was very different doing business on the east coast. I can tell you that. Yeah, but a great that is experience. so interesting. Yeah, I had no idea it would be that different. <laughs> And, and very nice, very nice people. I don't want to paint it that way, but I mean, definitely <laughs> rough and tumble, definitely a little bit tougher, a little bit more in your face, a little bit more pushy, all the kinds of things I hadn't experienced yet. And so that was a, a really big leap for me. And actually it was a really big challenge. I struggled. I struggled in that role in the sense that I just didn't feel like I could fit in. And I say that for other people who may be experiencing that as well, but I just couldn't find my, my niche there, you know, with those people. And we'll have to be back on another time for the guy who didn't wear pants, one of my clients. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I'm telling you, they toughened me up. Those people, that toughened and, they, me up. and that wasn't a guy who didn't wear pants on Zoom. That was a guy who didn't wear <laughs> pants in real life, right? In person, yeah. <laughs> He'd be in his boxers when I'd get there. And I was just like, dude. Oh, my gosh. Dude. Oh, my gosh. I've got stories. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, I've walked in the tunnels of Yale, under Yale, rats and everything. Anywho, so I was growing my career and I don't, you know, it's hard because as you have more years after that, you reflect back differently. But I remember that I wasn't moving in my career as fast as I wanted. I'm totally a high performer. And I was looking for something more and I was agitated and I was actually overworked and I felt underpaid. I know you can relate, uh, you listener. And I just decided, like, I am one of those people who kind of makes that decision and then moves. And so this would be another big dare to leap, which is I decided I was going to leave corporate altogether to start my own business. I had just finished an and MBA. And what business did you start first? <laughs> well, I've had three enterprises. Yeah, I built three enterprises. So my very first business was, um, it would be kind of like the, the typical entrepreneur story in the sense of most of us go, oh, I'm going to start a business. What am I passionate about? You know, what really lights me up? And I had a long journey in the alternative healthcare wellness field. So it made total sense that I was going to own and operate my own alternative healthcare clinic and ended up doing that and doing that very, very well. But here's, here's the moment of caution for you listening who wants to take one of those big leaps. I started the wrong business. You know, after 10 years moving around the country, working globally, uh, being able to uh, work from anywhere and travel, so I was like the original remote worker, right? Um, developing a business that was brick and mortar, very local centered with a small team of individuals who didn't think like me at all. Now we're talking about naturopaths and acupuncturists and massage therapists, and I'm your professional gal over here. It just was the completely wrong type of business for me. So I put it up for sale and exited when my coaching and consulting business started to unfold. That was and probably who were you coaching number in? two. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's another big leap. 10. So what was yeah. your coaching and consulting business? Yeah. Well, who was that for? Oh, my gosh. I've worked with all kinds of people. So I've worked with solo startup entrepreneurs all the way to, you know, seasoned entrepreneurs who want to sell or exit their business all the way to um, multi six figure, seven figure mark executives trying to scale. Um, I've worked with senior executives at Fortune, fill-in-the-blank companies. So I've done, been, and seen it all. Yeah. And, and you look like you're about 21 years old. So Thank you've done you. a lot. You, 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 you probably need to file some kind of suit because people <laughs> made you work when you were a child. You know, <laughs> I did, I've worked since I was 14 in a business. And this is a really interesting wow. tidbit about me. And one of the reasons I believe that I was fast tracking in my career early on is I had eight, nine years of experience, although it wasn't full time, being in a business 
um, working in all kinds of different areas. So I understood the um, complexity and the puzzle of what, organiza what made organizations tick from very, very early on. And that's really one of my zones of genius is to be able to, um, sometimes I feel like I'm not specialist enough, but I'm such a great generalist and I have such of the big picture that that's what is really valuable uh, for my clients. Well, and Michelle, as somebody who has had the great fortune of working with you for several years now, I will say that in addition to having a really, you're, you've got like that thousand foot vision view, you also really grasp very quickly what's happening, what the problems, barriers, challenges are, and what the opportunities are. And you can really help somebody grow so fast, including me. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome very much. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like you might have um, not ended where you are actually today. So yes. tell us where you are today. So I'm still Unless there's one more leap that I missed. <laughs> well, there's leaps all over in that because, you know... <laughs> I'd like to say this before I answer your question, which is it takes a lot of courage. This isn't, I don't want to make it sound like, oh, it's so easy. It takes a lot of courage to make these shifts. And sometimes they're not huge leaps. And I also want to call that out that sometimes it's a matter of making one decision, then the next decision, then the next decision. Because I specifically remember with my clinics, you know, that was my business baby, my very, very first business, I put blood, sweat, and tears. I did everything on the shoestring budget. I, I, I learned, I failed. I, you know, and so letting that go was so difficult. It wasn't very, it wasn't flippant. So it sounds like a big dare to leap. And it was, it's pretty scary to let go of something that by all means was successful to go and do yeah, something Yeah, and that you else. put your blood, sweat, and tears in. Yeah, but it yeah. was a lot of small decisions in that one to get there. So I'm still running coaching and consulting, but I also now have founded Evolutionized Media, which is solely focused on the podcast community and helping to amplify other voices of amazing women and potentially men. Um, that is really a passion. <laughs> I don't want they're gonna to have to beg you, them. and they're gonna have to wear pants. They're gonna have to be amazing. <laughs> they're gonna have to wear pants. <laughs> pants will be required on our network. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Um. So really, it's a. It, it's my love. It's my baby love child now because I am extremely, it's deep inside of me because I was actually, you, you, you're not going to get guess this meeting me now, but I was so shy and unconfident and quiet and never spoke up or never said what I thought, always held it all in. And so it's a huge passion of mine to not only put myself out there and, and voice. I mean, it's not lost on me, the irony that I can speak into a microphone so eloquently now. It's really not lost on me. But to help other people do that very same thing and to inspire others to do that same thing is really what's in my heart that needs to come out. Well, I am so glad that you shared it with me and that you are now sharing it with the woman listening to us right now. Or hey, maybe lady. there's a man without any pants on. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I better put my pants on while I listen to this. <laughs> I know it's the craziest thing. I've got crazy stories, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, I love your stories. Yeah, they're, they're great. Uh, so I am definitely going to have to have you back where we tell more stories. <laughs> um, but right now, I would love for you to, and there's something that you said that I wanted to go back to, and now I'm blanking on what it, what it was. So I'm Don't just going to jump to the next one. Like Ever, ever since I passed the 40 mark, I'm just cutting her off on her own show. Ever since I passed the 40-year-old mark, things just get lost in my brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'll come back. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, believe me. Been there, done that, have the t-shirt. Um, so let's just jump to the next topic, which is really all woven into what you've been talking about. Um, you know, we, we talked about how we both look and how we look different and how that's A-OK -okay, because it's who we are. 
But one of the things that you, and I know I've asked you this myself, um, that you have been thinking about and sharing information on your blog about is how to look your best for remote team meetings or remote meetings even with one other person. Because yeah. in this day and age, we really do have to do a lot more video conferencing, whether it's from your office with somebody in another country or from your home um, office with somebody even across the street. It doesn't yeah. matter. Worldwide, we are using this platform a lot more. So how do you recommend to look your best? Yeah, I have. I'm really. So let me tell you how this was born. I've been cooking up all these tips and tricks for myself, right, over the years being virtual. And just in the time period that we're in, so many of the leaders that I'm talking to and working with, right, they're busy executives, uh, now having to move everything virtual for themselves and their teams are like, what do you do about this, Michelle? How do you handle this? You know, should I be thinking about fill in the blanks? I'm like, oh my God, I'm so... This is probably silly. Nobody's going to read it, but I'm going to write down everything that I've kind of do in my like secret little tips to look like this in a pinch, right? In a pinch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to look like you in a pinch, I would ha I would have to have an entire uh <laughs> Life makeover. So let's not go quite that far. But oh my God. Look your best, whatever yeah, that might be. Well, just to help people think about this, because here's the thing. And, and I was talking with my husband about this too, because he runs a ton of virtual meetings, but a lot of people in his company now, which is, you know, Fortune 500, everybody's virtual. And he said the spectrum of how people are showing up is really vast. Oh. And yes. I have a strong opinion about this. And now remember, my opinion is really because how I like to show up and also my audience. So you've got to think about the type of community that you're playing in. So what I say might not completely apply, but the, the, that's the whole point is to understand the culture of the business that you're in and that how you look not only represents you, but it's representing the brand. So if, if it's your own company and your brand is tiaras, by all means, wear tiaras. But if you're working for a corporation, what is their brand? Do they want you in, in cut, out, cut off jeans and scraggly t-shirts? Do they want you with bedhead hair? I don't know, but my, my opinion is no. So Do they I, want you actually laying in bed? I've heard stories lately of corporations having meetings where somebody's actually laying in bed with their uh, computer propped right. up, literally with a cover up. Now, let me give you a different perspective. If you were in person in the office, would you waltz into the CEO's office and lay down on the couch, put your feet up and say, hey, Joe or Jane, how you doing? You would not. Right. So why mm -mm. would you show up virtually that way. So this, I, I'm getting real, I get passionate about this because <laughs> you want to grow your career. You want to make meaningful connections. I'm sorry. We just live in a society that judges based on this first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Even yeah. via remote video. Yeah. So I, I have a whole piece on this and it has links and everything. No, no, no affiliate things like that, but just to show, like literally give you all the things that I use. But let me just highlight some of them because for the sake of time, otherwise we'll be here for a couple hours. But one of the things you can <laughs> easily do is get a good camera. You can get a good, not just use your laptop camera. You know, you can get a good camera and a, and a little clip-on ring light or a bigger ring light, and you're going to look 10 times better than without. Like, it's easy. It's pretty cost-effective. Um, mm -hmm. And then if you're using a tool like Zoom, they even have touch up your appearance. So check that box, baby. No, they don't. Yes, in the city. Oh, my God. I have to go See? check that box. <laughs> it touches up your appearance. See, I already learned something. Oh, let me ask you a question. Um, do you mind if I interrupt you? I'm sorry. But I want to know about the light. Do you have one of those ring lights on right now for you? Because you look awesome. Your lighting yes. looks amazing. Yes, I do. And is it a small one or a big one? It's a big one. 
It's about like the okay, 24 cool. inch one or so. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I have. Um, I actually have one of those. I just don't have it with me today where I am yeah. today. So, uh, so great tip. But I want to try the clip on one too. Yeah, it oh, depends on how much space you have, right? So I have a big office mm -hmm. so I can keep it far away. And um, Oh, yeah. And, you know, if you want to get into the nitty-gritty, it comes with different filters that you can put over it. And there's like mm -hmm. a peachy one. Yeah. I, I've tried it, and it looks better with my skin, so I use that one. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. See all these great tips? And is this all these extra tips included in your blog post? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And we will link to the blog post in our show notes. Okay, perfect. Um, one of the other tidbits that I really don't think people think about, besides the fact that you better have pants on, you don't want to just pay attention to your chest up because I can't tell you how many uh -oh. times I've had to potentially stand up by, just because maybe somebody was walking into my office like and I if you don't expect to stand up then you don't plan for the bottom down but you better plan for it you better plan for it and um, I would even go as far as to practice stand, putting it on putting the camera on standing up and seeing what you look like from the boobies oh. down <laughs> That is a great tip. That because, is a great tip. I mean, it's not it just... It happens, absolutely. It totally happens. Yeah. And it's not just do I have pants on. It's how does that look when I stand up? Yeah, because my dog threw up on me one time when I was on one of these Zoom sessions. And I jumped up really fast and then remembered I didn't have a bra on. Yeah. <laughs> That was See, that's good. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, we get a little bit too comfortable. Um, one of the things I do, because I'm all about looking good in a pinch, because how many of you maybe don't expect, you didn't get ready for the day, not ready, ready, because you weren't planning on having anything on video. And then, you know, Kathy gets on the call with you for your interview and she mm -hmm. says, oh, by the way, we're doing video. And you're like, hmm. hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So because mm -hmm. I love video. Yeah, I'll give you some of my uh, my tips real quick. I don't know where we are on time, but one of the things I do is we I, got plenty of time. We okay, have plenty okay. of time. So one of my uh, outfit, uh, what do I want to say? Like my foundational outfit pieces is either a tank or a like black or a pretty simple color, uh, a tank or a t shirt, so that I can put jackets over it really fast and have it look good. So keep a jacket in your office. Keep a jacket that pretty much goes with everything, looks good on you. And even if you want like a chunky necklace, that would be taking it one step further. That way you can get on anytime. Find a hairstyle that works well for you, even if your hair's dirty. Okay, so that that's really important, right? Like I didn't wash my hair. I totally all agree. Out. You yeah. gotta find out what works for you and then have those tools in your office. A lot mm -hmm. of times I throw my hair up in a bun on top of my head. It's kind of like a mm -hmm. um, t breakfast at Tiffany's sort of look. And it works for me, but that Ooh, might not la, work la. for somebody else. <laughs> 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 well, you know, think about it. It works. Though, right? I love it. Think I've got it. the messy bun. Mm -hmm. The messy bun really works for me because I don't have the patience to do anything more. Yeah. And um, for me, it doesn't matter if I have just washed my hair, it looks worse than if I haven't washed it for three days. I don't know how your hair is, but I can get ready, try my hardest, wash my hair, do my hair, do my makeup. And my husband looks at me and goes, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> because my hair really does look better on day two or day three because yeah. just the way my hair is. Right. So, no, yeah, I do sense. the bun or not the bun depending on what day it is. Yeah. Um. And I love these, the next tips I'll share are for the ladies and maybe, maybe for the gents too. I really want to encourage you to think about your skin and the, the, so a lot of people say, Michelle, you look, you're glowing. Okay. I'm going to tell you, I don't always have full makeup on. I'm going to tell you exactly what I do to look like this without oh, a lot of makeup. Okay. One is the lighting yeah. and the camera. I already shared that. Two, and this is where I say for the gents as well, you've got to moisturize your skin. You have to moisturize your skin. And I use a tinted 
moisturizer that has mm. um it's in the blog post so you can look at it it's a keys soap mm -hmm. product so it's all natural but it has um a little bit of shimmer in it and i think that's what people oh. see and you, even in person it looks beautiful it makes my skin glow i never thought about that a shimmer a little shimmer but that helps it be more light light reflective on camera that's not makeup it's just wow. a tinted moisturizer I love that. Even I could do that. Yeah. Now it's one product and I don't know how it works for all the skin tones. So, but it works for me. It's supposed to work with all the skin tones, right? Oh, okay, so there's only one tinted color. There's not a variety of tinted colors. Yeah. It's not that. Got tinted. it. Does that make Got sense? Got it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That, so that's, Number one. <clears throat> Number two is you got to fill in your eyebrows. If you're not going to wear any makeup, you can still you can still get a powder and just brush it on over your eyebrows. It's going to make your eyes, it's going to frame your eyes and it's going to help you uh, not look so washed out. And I almost think some of the gentlemen should do this if they don't have really strong eyebrows. I might, it just depends on how much, you know, how much presenting you're doing. Okay. Not just for your average. Yeah, I really agree with you on the guys also. And um, that's another thing. How many times have you and I gotten on a Zoom session and I'm like, Michelle, how are your eyebrows so perfect? And every time you're just like, I really didn't do anything. Not much. And I'm like, oh, I, stop telling me that. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I will tell you that because I don't like to have to do much uh, labor, um, none, um, I got my eyebrows microbladed. Now you might be looking at me right now going, Oh man, you needed some more work done there. <laughs> um, because COVID interrupted the finishing microblading, but uh, I will get that finished. <laughs> all the ladies I will are get that finished. you on that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in the meantime, um, I can easily, uh, draw that in now because of where they put that. Yeah. So on you my have a good eye shaping. Eyebrows. Yes, thank you. That's the word I was looking for because I've tried to do it on my own before, before they did that shaping and I was kind of like either one of those clown looks or yeah. I look like I had it on my eyelid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys can all hate me. Take a look at, you know, a photo of me or I've never had my eyebrows professionally done at all. My, the woman who j j has done all my photography, I know Kathy hates me. I mean, I, I have had some, you know, I've shaped them a little bit, but the woman who did, did all my photography, so if you see like professional photos of me online, taught me how to do my eyebrows. And so I can teach you. All I do wow. is I have a pencil and I fill in, not the whole brow, just the top. And you can make it a little bit, give yourself a little lift, you know, give yourself a little up. Okay. Don't fill mm -hmm. in underneath. And then with the powder, mm -hmm. then you fill in the whole brow. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that looks really good. So um, and that's a really good tip because I had no clue what a difference that could make until I did have that professional microblading done. And yeah. when they did that, guess where they put all of the fill in part? Above. Yeah. The fill in is above. Don't go mm -hmm. below. Give yourself a lift, yeah. ladies. Come on. I had no idea. Me neither. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So really the last tip. thing on the makeup, if you're a no makeup gal, because I really didn't grow up with makeup, so I didn't know all this stuff either, but just at least have a lip gloss, like a tinted lip gloss, just to give your, <laughs> so maybe you're not full red lips, but just to give yourself a little bit more <laughs> color as well. Why are you giggling at me? Here's mine. I'm not giggling at you. I'm <laughs> giggling at me because basically, lady, everything you said is what I have not done today. <laughs> and I'm sitting here going... Check. Nope. Did not do that one. Check. Nope. Did not do that one. <laughs> Are you wearing pants? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am wearing pants. It's a small miracle, though, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a different, I, I, you know, I think you're a great example of this because you have a diff, you have a certain style that you've developed your brand and community around. So they're not expecting that of you. And I just think that it's just important to, for people to take a pause and go and go, well, why do I have to get dressed up? Or why do I need to look a certain way? Well, you, you don't, but just know that people are judging that. And especially based on whatever right. the culture is that you're in. I think people, 
you know, and I've learned this over time. I can't tell you, I mean, how many people comment on how I look. And I think the reason is, and you and I have been in the, the virtual space much longer than most of the working professionals right now, that mm -hmm. all we're doing is sitting here. You know, when you're in a meeting around a table, you don't stare at people. But all we do is to just go, wow, look at her eyebrows, look at her eyebrows, look at her eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if she's wearing pants. I wonder if she's wearing pants. You know, like that's all we have. To I wonder do. if she's going to stand up. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. And you know, here's the thing. I actually believe, I actually believe if you have a hot mess going on behind you and we didn't talk about any of that stuff, I think you're going to get more grace around that than you are. If this looks uh, disheveled, I think people are more mm, graceful in, you know, your kids running by, your, pe your pets jumping up, your, you know, your kid coming mm -hmm. in uh, a little bit. Oh, messy. that. Yeah, just like my dog right now is coming yeah. in, and, in and out right behind me. I think people understand that you can't control everything in your environment. But they, mm -hmm. I don't think they're as graceful or give as much leeway if you're just showing up and, you know, you haven't washed your hair in a week. You've got a ripped T-shirt on, no bra and no pants. I mean, I just think just <laughs> that flat. <laughs> well, I will tell you that, um, you know, I, the tiara thing I just did on a whim one time because, you know, uh, my coach dared me. This is when you and I were both coaching with, with Ryan and he said, you just have to get on there and do Facebook Live. And I'm like, okay, fine. I'm just going to go like this. And I wore my pajamas and a tiara that I just had there because I didn't want to do anything to my hair. And everything just blew up from there. Seriously, people loved it. And since then, if I don't wear a tiara, they go, well, where's your tiara? So you really do have to be careful what you start because you're going to have to keep doing it if that's going to be your brand. Yeah. And, and, and just again, like you're leading the charge. This is your company, your brand, your culture. Right. If you're, right. If you're a, a remote worker, a virtual worker for somebody else's brand, it's it's your responsibility right. to represent in that way i believe right that's what yeah. i would want my team to be doing right and um even with my team i mean you know i'm very casual uh, i have a sales team as you know because you help yeah. me with them also uh, can you guys tell michelle helps me with just about everything because she's that good um but they all wear either, like you were talking about, some kind of um, jacket over a t-shirt, or they actually wear my logoed t-shirt. Mm, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So it's still very casual. It's very them, um, very my brand, and um, but it is a really good representation for my business, and I really appreciate that they're willing to do that because they're all independent contractors, and they can really wear whatever they want. But That's they true. choose That's to, true. yeah, they choose to represent my brand very well like that. Yay. Yeah, I mean, the relationship mm -hmm. you have with the organizations that you work for, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot more tips. And I mean, I go into the detail of the exact camera I use, the exact microphone, the exact skincare. Um, I don't get any kickbacks or anything from sharing that. I just think people want to know, well, I, I want to get some moisturizer. Which one should I get? Well, mm -hmm. here's the one I mm -hmm. use, you know? Yeah. And what I really want to know is, do you have a picture of yourself in your attic that is aging? <laughs> Shut it up. <laughs> Shut it up. <laughs> you know, there's got to be some magic going on here somewhere. <laughs> I will tell you, I, I do feel like I was born into a spot. My mom always looked very young. I feel like I've not, I mean, she r looked really, really young for a long time. But one of the things that I do that maybe peep that might be different than a lot of people is uh, being in the alternative healthcare space. I'm a big proponent of acupuncture and I've had lots of acupuncture and lots of facial acupuncture, which can be really effective mm. for anti-aging. But oh, I don't have wonderful. any other Another things. I don't have tip. fillers or anything like that. I, um, 
and I, I have derma planing done. Uh, if people mm-hmm. see people want to know, I like, love I, derma planing. I, I have that done too. Yeah. Makes such a huge difference. Yeah. I knew nothing about it until about two years ago. And the first time I had it done, I was like, Oh, this is like magic. Do you know they have a, um, they have some at home options now for this. It's derma planing. I actually own from- one of them. Yeah, me too. I was going to make sure. Okay, so I'll give up. Again, no kickbacks here, but Derma Flash right, right. is the one that I use, and I think it's pretty mm-hmm. darn good. That's the one I have. Yep. Yep, and we hadn't even talked about that before. No. But yeah, once I had it done, and then I couldn't go back and keep getting it done, I'm like, I can't be without this now. And I saw that, and I'm like, buying that. Because it, yeah. I mean, it's not like dirt cheap, but it is really inexpensive compared to actually going and getting it done um, by a professional. So yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you don't tip. get you don't get the spa experience, but you still get the right. You know, youthful glow from taking that dead skin away. Yeah, and you know, you well, let's get let's get uh, a little TMI right now because I really like to do that. Um, I have a lot of hair. Okay, let's just be real. Right. Basically, I could have a... I, <laughs> yes! Which, when I do put makeup on, makes a huge difference. Yeah. Because I could really have that, um, you know, more even glow looking thing with, like even with that makeup you're talking about, when I have had the dermaplane done or done it myself. And if I haven't, then it kind of looks like matted hair. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah no i mean it's it's great because you just everything glides on your skin you've got your, right. your products your products are soaking into your skin so much better you're getting mm-hmm. all the dead skin off and anyways i'm a big big yeah. fan so those are that's all i do I've, i mean i've had facials here and there but that's it lady those are my secrets those are great secrets. Thank you for sharing those. So I want to talk about one more thing on this topic. Okay. And that is, because I know this is an issue for a lot of people, it was a huge issue for me. That's why I did not do anything where you could see me for a very long time. That's why I had to be challenged by my coach to do something on Facebook Live before I would do it. What if you have low self-esteem about the way you look and you're fearful like I was. I was fearful that if somebody saw the real me and how, you know, old I actually am and any flaws that they would pick out that they wouldn't want to work with me. So how do you deal with that? Wow. That's a deep conversation, Kathy. I know, you know, I, I, we've talked about this in the past. Yeah. I had a lot to deal with with that. Mm-hmm. And, and now gonna, here I am, podcasts, YouTube videos, everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think it's natural for all of us to, you know, not want to stand out in a, a negative way. And mm-hmm. we tend to focus on the things that we don't like about ourselves and obsess mm-hmm. about those things. And Yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't know that there's one thing that you can do, but what I do know is that if you take time to obsess and focus on the things you do love about yourself, there will be less and less space for you to be um, telling yourself negative thoughts. I mean, my gosh, you would not show up and tell your very, very best friend how crappy she looks or that she's too old or she's too this or she's too that. You would not do that to her. So why are you doing it to yourself? That's, yeah, that, I love that. That is, that is such a great tip because that can make a huge difference just thinking, speak to yourself like you would a friend yeah. and that alone's going to help. Yeah. Um, I know for me, it was really just doing it the first time, even taking a small step, um, which is really what I did. And then the reaction I got from it made me realize people really don't care. People no. really care about who you are as a person, yeah. not what you look like. And you when know? you show yeah, yourself, like your yes. real self. That's right. Then they, Yeah, that's what people want to see. Yeah. 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 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have also heard a lot of people tell me, well, I really do like to get dressed up because I feel better. Fabulous. Yes. You should totally get dressed up then. Yeah. I wear a formal with high heels and a real tiara every day if that's what feels good. I'm serious. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, you know. I like to be dressed up. And so, but I actually, I have the flexibility just like you do is I don't have to be in a suit every day. I can be, Mm -hmm. I don't have to be in a dress, Mm -hmm. heels, but I can be. And so I just go with what Mm -hmm. I want for me and show up Mm -hmm. as me, to your point. Yeah. Hippie me today. Absolutely. Hippie me. (laughs) Yeah. And one more thing on that topic, which is, um, and I think you'll agree with me on this, Michelle. I think every woman is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I really do. Every woman is beautiful. I, I, I'm sitting here trying to think of woman after woman after woman that I know. And every one of them, I see their beauty. Mm-hmm. And I hope they, if they are struggling with this, I hope that they can begin to see their own beauty. And I feel like sometimes having a compliment from somebody, um, you know, like I know when somebody tells me how beautiful they think my silver hair is, it really makes me feel good, right? I was just um, thinking... Kathy has beautiful <laughs> hair. I'm so jealous. <laughs> and um, there's always something that you can compliment someone on. As long as you are sincere and really mean it, I say compliment anybody that you have the opportunity to do so. What do you think about that? I think that's our takeaway for today and challenge to the beautiful lady listening to our conversation is to make it a point. Um, don't wait. Uh, as we're wrapping up and as it ends, just quickly make a note to somebody yeah. you care about and let them know how beautiful they are. Yeah, I love that. That will really change somebody's day. Mm-hmm. And yours too. Yeah. yeah. Michelle, thank you so much for this. I want everyone to, I know we're going to share your blog post, but if people want to work with you first, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I got all choked up about that last topic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I really did. We're going to start crying. <clears throat> I know. I know. We can go from laughter to tears very easily, the two of us. Yes, yes. Um, it, who are the type of people that you're looking to work with? Tell us a little bit about those people in case um the per- that woman sitting here listening right now hi you you want to uh you're thinking you might want to work with michelle or you know someone who might want to work with michelle yeah. um who would that person be michelle and how would they best get in touch with you wow well on evolutionized media we're always looking for amazing voices who want to be part of a community of women like Kathy and I uh, who are rising together. And we will help amplify your voice. In terms of, you know, private work and consulting work, I'm, you know, it's really the same kind of message. I'm working with uh, professional working women, a lot of them in C-suite now, who are looking to their next legacy looking to make a transition and looking to find out what their inner voice, their heart wants to create next. And the best place to find me, I'm hanging out on LinkedIn all the time. Michelle McGlade's a pretty unique name. So I, I don't, I think it's, I'm the only one out there. You can find me there. You can find my content and you can get in touch. Thank you, Michelle. And I will be sharing all of those links in today's show notes, as well as the link to Michelle's podcast. She's talking back. (laughs) Did I get it right that time? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Michelle. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm-hmm.